stand if you're physically able, please stand and give God a big hand of praise. <laughs> really important to know that he is alive. Not to worry about your food. It's not going to start until you get down there. I, I need to say that to somebody because I can, I can see somebody decide to tip out a little early. I just need you to know it won't get you any closer in line. So uh, my, my ask is that you just go on and stay right where you're at. It's going to be all right. Amen. So I told them, make sure don't give anything out until you all get down there. Uh, people from the first service will be down there as well. Um, we come in this moment to be thankful to God for everything. I don't know about you, but God is a good God. Do I have a witness? Yes, he is. You better say this. God is, God is a great God. Before I get into my sermon, I want my sister Camille to, uh, at the end of service, don't leave. I need you to go over here. We'll make sure your, your, uh, your dinner is taken care of. But I want you and Brother Kirk uh, to do the Lord's uh, Prayer, if you will, together. Uh, at the end, at the end, nobody will be around. People will be around, but they ain't going to be listening to you, so don't worry about it. She made the mistake yesterday of telling me, that, oh, yeah, I've sung the Lord's Prayer before. I said, that's good, very good. We need that next Sunday uh, in the first service. Amen. Uh, I'm going to talk for about 10 minutes after I've given the, uh, the uh, passage of Scripture, which is a pretty short passage of Scripture today. And uh, I want to talk about the divine as I have been on this kick about the divine ever since last year when the pandemic happened, uh, divine question today, a divine question that Jesus asked. Uh, as we think about Jesus during this week of passion, um, he was gathered at the Garden of Gethsemane with his disciples, and he had asked Peter, James, and John to come closer as he went over with agony, dealing with the fact that he was becoming sin. He was taking on our sin, and it was, uh, the Bible describes it as he was gathered, he began to perspire like drops of blood uh, coming out of him. He asked his father, is there a way that this cup can pass from me? And by the way, let me just say on the way by, if you're looking at the passage of scripture from this morning, it was actually in Mark, not John. That was my mistake. It was actually in the book of Mark this morning. This passage is in the book of Luke. In the 22nd chapter of Luke, the 45th to the 46a is the verse for those that are listening in today in the NIV. And here it is. It says, when he rose from prayer and went back to the disciples, he found them asleep. Somebody didn't hear me, so let me try that again. He found them asleep, exhausted from sorrow. He asked a question. He said, why are you sleeping? Why are you sleeping? I want to deal with in the 10 minutes that I have with you today on a divine question. Why are you sleeping? Amen. Oh, God, we come in the name of Jesus to thank you for this time. Thank you for everything that has transpired up to this point. We pray a blessing over each one who's here in this building and each one, dear God, who's in this sanctuary and each one who's on the prayer line. We pray a blessing to each one of them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And I pray to thank you for the power of your spirit in this place. And thank you for the opportunity, really the honor, of being able to preach the word of God to the people of God. And we pray because what we know is that every sermon we give is a sermon you preach to us in the beginning. I pray that you will move away any distraction and that we'll be focused on the word of God to use it in every way, dear God, as we live life. We thank you for everything. In your son Jesus' name we pray for the hearers, for the word, for the delivery. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. You may be seated. How many of you like sleep? Just go on and raise your hand. You just like sleep. I got to have my sleep. 
How many of you like to sleep eight hours? How many of my eight, where are my eight hour sleepers? Okay, very good. Anybody want to sleep more than eight hours? I mean, we we got people sleep longer than eight hours. A amen. All right. How many of those are in my category? Was like three and a half to four hours. Where are you? A a amen. There you go. Right. Here's the thing. There's something about sleeping, and the, what's interesting is that I am a proponent that if you need more sleep, baby, get that sleep. Y'all don't, don't hear me, so I'm going to try this again. If you need the sleep, get it, because the person we get when you don't get enough sleep is a person that ain't very likable. Let me just say that amen, right? And, and therefore, it is important. And by the way, some of us, no matter how much sleep you get, during the course of any given day, there are things that happen that cause you to start nodding off. And I know that because I see you in church on Sunday. No matter how much, no matter how much sleep. There's some of you that have come up after, Pastor, I'm so sorry I had medicine to take. And I, that medicine really puts it. <laughs> but the fact is, all of us, our body needs a certain amount of sleep. And the, uh, in fact, quite frankly, for many of us, it's hard to sleep when it's really tough stuff that you're going through. How many times when you're going through life storms, you know that you want to go to sleep, but you just can't sleep. You can't eat. In fact, you get up two or three times. You look at the clock. It's 2 o'clock. You wake up again at 2.30 or 3.30. It's like, I can't believe that I'm finally going to go to sleep at 4.30 and then get up at 6 o'clock, and you have not slept. Sleep is a big deal, isn't it? For every one of us, it's important that we get the portion of sleep that we need. My doctor said if you sleep four hours and when you get up you're not tired, you got as much as you needed. Amen? But what's important for us is to remember that as we go through life, there will be interruptions to our sleep. There'll be interruptions to how life is going, and in fact, sometimes it can go so difficult that we just don't know what to do. And if you think about what's going on in this passage of Scripture, these disciples are literally in a panic because Jesus has made it clear that he's about to leave them. They have gotten used to him for three and a half years. We don't know, have a clue about these guys before he got to town. Come on, somebody. These were all teenage dudes. They, in fact, God is amazing how he used those that he didn't have to teach unlearning. I'm going to try that one more time. Y'all didn't get that, right? They didn't have to unlearn a lot of things because he was writing on a canvas that God had already prepared, the Father had already prepared. And these guys got used to Jesus after a while. You see, in the beginning, they were wondering, who is this crazy man? What is going on that he's able to turn water to wine and he's able to do all these amazing things and deal with healing people and multiplying a little boy's lunch and helping a dude that's sitting by the uh, the by the, uh, the 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 the, uh, the the by Bethesda's pool and he's doing all these amazing things and as he's doing it they are questioning whether he's real or not. And then after a while, they come to the understanding that he really knows what he's talking about. But even more importantly now, he is getting ready to leave, and the church belongs to them. And the rest of what's to happen is about them, and they are panicking on the one hand because Jesus is leaving. They're panicking on the other hand because all of this stuff is now going to be their responsibility. The ability to continue the work of the church, the work of Jesus, is now going to be on their shoulders. And they look at themselves and say, I ain't like him. I got bad attitude. I know y'all would never say that. I, I just don't have enough Jesus in me. You understand right? But these guys are having a fit because Jesus is about to go, and they see him with all of his power, and yet he feels powerless. Because as they look at him, they see that he's going through some stuff himself. And it's really hard when you are always depending on somebody who's strong. And when they begin to look weak, it really makes you begin to question your faith. 
as we look at this text, what we see is that Jesus says, I'm going through, by the way, but I'm going to go over here and I'm going to pray over here on this stone. And that stone still exists in Jerusalem in what's called the stone of agony inside the church of the uh, church of all nations. But they, he went, it says, just a stone's throw away from the disciples. He said, I need you to watch. I need you to pray. I need you to watch, and I need you to pray. And he went over to do some praying, and when he came back, he saw that they were asleep. He's going through the separation of himself and his father, taking on your sin and my sin, dealing with the issues of life. And Jesus is saying, I am asking you, Father, can you have this cup passed by me? And an angel came and gave him comfort, but the Father made it clear that this is something that you must do. And as Jesus deals with what he must do, he's looking back at his disciples and he walks up on them. And the very people that he asked to pray for him, pray while I'm over here praying, they were asleep. Last I checked, you can't be doing any praying while you sleep. Now, you can pray and go to sleep. I, I, know y'all, I know y'all have never done that before. Been right in the midst of praying, praying good. All of a sudden, you, you go off to sleep. Amen? And know very well that if they were praying, indeed, it may be the case that some of them did pray but still fell asleep. And one thing is for sure, when sleep gets to you, it's hard to shake it off. Do I have a witness here? There are times you wake up and don't even know when you went to sleep. Uh, a- amen belongs right there. And then you know how some of us are when the phone rings, we'll say, somebody on the other end will say, were you asleep? <laughs> and our answer is, I, bu- you can, I-, I bet you some money right now. No, I ain't asleep. <laughs> but Jesus didn't have to ask over a telephone line. He saw with his own eyes, that they were asleep. Jesus is saying, I'm going through the most agonizing moment of my earthly ministry, and I need you to be awake, and unfortunately, you guys are asleep. Can't you guys stay awake? And he goes back to the stone of agony and prays some more. Let me, with the time that is left, help you understand that as we go through this pandemic, unfortunately, there have been some people who are asleep. We are going through the most difficult times of our life, and there are people who are asleep, people who can't be depended on, people that we were hoping would be standing by, working with us and all that stuff, but they're asleep. In part, they're asleep because the church has been asleep, and it's time for the church to wake up and to recognize we don't need the church to be asleep when we're going through the going through. We need the church to be awake and willing to stand and take the blows of the wind and the waves and understand that we need to be where God needs us to be, no matter what the governor says, no matter what the mayor says, no matter what the president says, no matter what the doctor says, the church and the voice of the church must continue. We cannot be asleep. We can't afford to be asleep. We need to be praying right now. We need to be fasting and praying right now. We need to be doing everything that we can. Even if you're not in position to come to church, pray for the church, sing for the church, talk for the church, walk for the church, do what you can for the church. The last thing we need to be doing is sleeping, and Jesus is asking the divine question, why are you sleeping? in the midst of the storm. Why are you sleeping when I need you to get up? Why are you sleeping when you got the talent? Why are you sleeping when you will not share the talent that I've given you? Why are you asleep? I need you to wake up, and I think that the message to the church is not only to get up, but to wake up and stay up and do what God has called us to do. The church needs to quit sleeping and recognizing its power to be able to help change conditions in life. The church needs to spend its time. Why hasn't man 
figured out the situation with the homeless because the church is silent. Why haven't we figured out the racial marriage? Because the church is sleeping. Why haven't we figured out how to get along with one another? Because the church can't get along with one another. Because we get stuck on who's Baptist, who's Methodist, who's Episcopalian, who's Lutheran, who's the church of God in Christ. We ought to all be God's children and quit sleeping on our denomination. The world is going to Hades in a handbag and we're asleep. I'm telling you right now, we need to wake up and get up and start doing the work that God has called us to do. The church must not sleep in the midst of this pandemic. The church must not sleep when things get tough. The church must not sleep when it's, we get stuck on ourselves and our own attitude and what it is that we want. The church can't sleep. The church cannot be selfish. The church cannot be about our bad attitude. The church has got to be about Jesus Christ. That's part one. You'll get part two next week. Let's stand, give God some praise. Let's stand and give God some praise.